Hey everyone, it's FeedyX. If you know anything about me, you'll know that I love arcade sticks. I could talk about it literally all day. It's like borderline obnoxious. I don't have my collection here because I just moved, but here are some pictures of everything I have back home. Anyways, obviously you have people customizing their artwork, their lever, and their buttons. However, an overlooked part of it very often is the layout of the buttons. One of the more popular layouts these days is the noir layout. So you could see that there's a decent amount of space between the buttons and the lever, and the buttons kind of follow this curvature of the hand. It was made as an improvement over the old Vulix layout. The Vulix layout is kind of a relic of the old arcade era, so people were sitting so close together it made sense to have your stick and your buttons right next to each other. Even though the noir layout is more comfortable for a lot of people, many Korean Tekken pros have actually gone back to the Vulix layout. The reason is that most Tekken players need to keep their hands on these primary punch and kick buttons, but in the clutch you might need to pull off a quick rage drive, or you might need to pull off a quick parry, and these extra buttons can be mapped to that. If you want to reach these right side buttons while keeping your fingers on these left side buttons, you have to kind of tuck in your elbow. And many players who play on their lap have their arms naturally at a bit of an angle. So in the clutch, if you want to be ergonomic, you have to tuck your elbow really quickly to reach this bottom button. Most players instead will just turn their wrist, and over an extended period of time, repeatedly making this motion with the wrist can cause injury. So the exciting news is I worked with my sponsor, Arcade Shock, and we developed a brand new top panel for the Quanba Obsidian. This uses what is called an extended Vulix layout. It's a modernization of the old arcade layout, copying the spacing of the modern noir layout. This ends up with a really comfortable, natural position for your shoulders and your elbows. I personally find it very ergonomic as someone reaching for these far right buttons all the time. Two arcade sticks, the Hori Rap Kai and the Victrix Pro, use variations of this layout, but we wanted to bring it to one of the most popular sticks on the market. In my live stream today, I installed it and went through the uh, entire process of putting it together. It does require a bit of modification to the plastic case of the Obsidian, but I found it pretty approachable as somebody who has like no experience with hand tools or anything that isn't a screwdriver. So, hope you enjoy. Uh, if you decide that you do want to buy it, the link is available below. Enjoy! Basically, when you get it, it'll come in a container like this. A little box like this. Uh, yeah, I got a bunch of buttons in here. I'll switch to the desk cam. When you open it, it'll come in this single envelope. Only a knife angle. Clear. So the cool thing about this panel, unlike the others, is it's one piece. Oh shit, that's cool. This is a one piece panel. So... The mounting hardware comes attached. Normally, there's a bottom plate and an upper plate. But... This new panel is a one-piece solution. I can't flex it at all, so it feels pretty good. It is 2.8 millimeters thick. I think it's a bit thicker than just the base thing, so let me get my actual stick. So I've taken apart most of it. There's one button left, but uh, you'll see the difference here. The bottom panel is the new one. The top one is the original Vulix. And the buttons are in the same alignment, but the joystick is a bit farther out. This is really exciting. It's a lot more ergonomic. Um, you can keep your elbows flared. Uh, for example. Which is a bit more natural for me. Playing on Noir, I have to tuck in a little bit. I'll actually show an example of that right here. So here is my Noir layout. Panther Panthera. <laughs> Anyways, this is my Noir layout arcade stick. And you can see that it's, it is pretty natural. It fits the curvature of the hands. But... In order to match that curvature and hit this button, you have to pull, if you look at the alignment of my wrist here, look at the alignment of my wrist and elbow here. So in order to reach this bottom one, I have to tuck my elbow in. See my torso is like here? I have to tuck my elbow in to hit the bottom. And when this is sitting on my lap, like this, tucking my elbow is a bit more energy than I'd like to put in, in order to hit this bottom button. So. The rationale with the extended Vulix is you still get the spread out feel, but to hit this button, I don't have to rotate my elbow in all the way. It's just a lot easier to access. So, it's looking good. I'm excited to put this in. To remove this, I have to remove the stickers on here. It looks like they hot glued them down. That's fascinating. So my panel isn't the, obviously, <laughs> is not the original Obsidian's. It's Arcade Shock's, um... Aluminum panel with engraving. Big Daddy White Boy, you mentioned the acoustics being concerning. That I'm a bit concerned about too. One of my biggest pet peeves is loud arcade sticks. Okay, screws are out. So, you can see this is the top panel. I think the thickness might be the same. That's a little concerning. Anyways, this is the bottom support panel. But again, not a lot of flex, so I'm hopeful. Now there's another set of six screws. I don't get these mixed up. 
Okay, now this is out. So, in order to fit this in, I believe there has to be some trimming. Yeah. So it won't lie flush until I cut away part of this. It looks like it's only about a millimeter that needs to be cut. I don't think you guys can see it. Just that little amount there. I don't have a proper X-Acto knife, and I definitely don't want to snip this LED thing. How are we going to do this? I do have a serrated knife here, maybe I'll try that. It's going to be ugly, but is serrated a mistake here? I feel like this might be fine, right? You need a Dremel? Yeah, I don't have a Dremel. I definitely don't want to cut my mouse pad. The knife is biting, it's doing good. I don't want to cut this cable, let me unplug it. So this, okay. I have so much more peace of mind now, holy shit. Which way did you end up cutting it, Firebird? Like this? I'm not sure which the optimal way to cut this is. Like this, oh yeah, this is the way for sure. So definitely recommend unplugging that cable, I'll show that again. So we've gotten through most of it here. About halfway through. Okay. Whew. Okay, so you could do it with a pocket knife. I'm hoping I made a deep enough cut, but I'll show you guys. Cut off a very tiny amount, and that might just be enough. So it pretty much fits, I just need to do a bit of filing. He's pretty much in there. Just gonna take the file here, file down the rest of that. Very familiar with this motion, not too fatiguing. <laughs> we are in? Oh, not quite, almost, almost. I'm pretty sure if I inhale these plastic shavings, I'll die. <laughs> Nice, good fit. Ish. I'm gonna do a little more filing so it's not being pushed out at all. But it's basically good, so... Alright, it's time to screw this down now. So yeah, again, one piece instead of the two pieces, which is a bit nice. I'm hoping the sound is good, too. So it was protruding a bit here in the middle, but once I screwed it down, it went fine, so... I'm excited! I guess my stick will be a bit lighter, which I always like. Traveling around with a heavy stick is kind of exhausting, so... One thing I don't like is that because it's integrated into this hardware now, there are these four dots here. That's not my favorite. I'm glad I didn't accidentally scrape the top while I was doing all this, too. Okay! Now... So many plastic shavings on my desk. Snort the excess dust is crazy, dude. So once we've done the hard part, which is sawing it down and screwing it in, the rest is just putting our stuff back together. Although, I did detach this. This is the LEDs for the side panel. I believe it was wrapped actually underneath this. And that plugs in next to the button harness here. I unplugged that just to make sure I could saw without damaging the, uh, the ca cable for this LED here. Which multi-tool is that? It's a uh, snap-on. Ooh, that was exciting. Okay, that's over. Now, this is the fun part. The buttons go in. And I have Generation 1 Quanba Gravities. I love these. Okay, so same thing here. I'm pushing the nut all the way down. And then twisting it from this side. That way I can guarantee that the nut fits regardless of the PCB. You guys can see that. It's kind of a tight fit. But it does fit. The Obsidian's nice because, it, because everything is, uh, all the wires are kind of cut to the length that you need for the button. So you can kind of guess. Oh, but Gemini just posted it. X, brown, square, green. 
I also need to make sure to push these in pretty deeply because I've had tournaments <laughs> where my buttons came undone. Give them a light pull test. Okay, the buttons are done. Now, the lever, the fun parts. I wonder, because there's no support plate, if the, the lever height will actually be different as well. That would be tough. Another complication I'm seeing right here already. Oh, no. I need to actually file more down. That's what's happening. The mounting plate is directly clashing with this part. So I need to file more down. Luckily, because it's all one plate, I don't have to re-screw the buttons in. But it is what it is. This is nice. All, having it all in one lets me just not have to redo the buttons. That's awesome. But I have to redo this filing, which is annoying. So... I don't want to damage this cable for the LEDs. Spray paint? No. Arcade Shock also sells these side panels. Have you done this kind of stuff before? This is my first time doing any filing or cutting. Usually I just do like the screwdriver shit, you know? Scored a little line to make it easier to see how far I need to go, and then I just file. Okay, we have filed off enough. Okay, case right here. This goes right in. Little pull test. That one came out, that's alarming. Okay, now it's lever time. My favorite part. So what was happening was this screw hole, this little plastic piece, I cut it off here. It was blocking the screw hole. So even though I could fit it in, I had to cut off a little bit extra right down here. See that lip? I had to cut off a little bit extra to accommodate the mounting plate and line up the screw hole. <laughs> Looks tight and centered. Now, assembling everything else. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's mad comfortable. Oh, that's super comfortable. Oh, it feels like I'm playing on a noir layout in terms of the spacing. Oh, this is great. Oh, I'm real happy about this. Okay, okay, now we gotta put the bottom on. Should've plugged in the audio cable again. Oh boy, I'm excited. I can boot up Tekken. Let's do that now. Okay. Hope that it's all good. Oh. This is real exciting. This is the first test. Got scared. It was locked. <laughs> it's a bit louder already, but aside from that, I can't electric. No, these buttons are wrong. I put these two backwards. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Electric Gwyn Bong Fist? <laughs> I got it. Yeah, that's hard. Nice, okay. That's pretty good. But this is why I really got it. That 2P backdash gonna go crazy now. 
Let me fix the buttons. Oh, I'm ashamed. 